Hallelujah, Dan. Well, Boy, Dan, howdy, Ruby Jean. <laughs> you're quoting, you're channeling me. Oh, my gosh. I we, am. We got our computers back up and running. Thank you to fabulous staff member Amanda Schauger for saving the day. I can at least read my copy. The playlist will go in later, but, you know, it's all good. It's all good. Right, Dan? Dan Absolutely. Buckley, you're here to talk about El Casino Ballroom. What a surprise. I surely am. I surely am. Um, actually, KXCI is a partner with me on this enterprise. I am currently doing a documentary film about El Casino Ballroom. And I think a lot of people, a lot of KXCI members would be genuinely surprised to learn that back in the days when uh, uh, black artists in Tucson, including Little Richard and Chuck Berry and and many of those folks, uh, all the Motown reviews, they played at El Casino Ballroom because they couldn't play the white clubs in Tucson. Are you talking back in the 50s? I'm talking back in the 50s okay. and, and early 60s. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, you know, it, it was the great place for all of the spectacular uh, Mexican music, uh, Jose Alfredo Jimenez, the uh, Trio Los Panchos, um, uh, Pedro uh, Infante and Jorge Negrete, all of those great artists played there. So many have played. It was it was Tucson's home of Tejano music for many many years, and it has always been the place where political parties, both political parties, have come to woo the Latino vote. Um, I can tell you a quick great story about that. When Barry Goldwater back in the 60s sent his guys in suits to El Casino Ballroom to scope the place out. (laughs) And he... I'm just uh, picturing this. (laughs) Exactly. Uh Exactly. And so they looked around and they walked into the men's room and then they walked into the women's room and then they very hurriedly headed to Butch Martinez's office, who Butch was the manager at the time back then. And they said to him, Mr. Martinez, this is a wonderful, wonderful place, but we have... We have some concerns about the women's room because Mrs. Goldwater might at some point need to use the women's room. And without skipping a beat, Butch Martinez said, Well, let me put your minds at ease. Mrs. Martinez uses it all the time, and it works just fine. (laughs) So that was that. (laughs) The building itself and the place that it represents in the community has, um, has engendered phenomenal legends and stories it's it's just a building in a lot of respects but it's not just a building it had one of the greatest wooden dance floors i've ever seen um the big old parking lot all kind of shenanigans would go on out in the parking lot and then there was the latin american social club are you kind of tying in the history exactly of that as well? exactly well the ballroom itself is 65 years old this year and the Latin American Social Club, which is the group that oversees the El Casino Ballroom, is 80 this year. Oh, my gosh. So this is a very auspicious year for us. And we have been doing the Cine Plaza at the Fox um, documentary series now since 2010. And this is our fifth documentary in the season and the longest uh, that we have done so far. This one will be an hour long. And really why I'm here is to invite KXCI members who have their own wonderful memories, no doubt, not just of the great house rock and uh, concerts that that KXCI uh, brought on, but maybe more that they saw over the years. Perhaps they might have some photos, but we'd love to, to interview you and make you part of this documentary. Documentary. And uh, if there were children that were born out in those parking lot shenanigans, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. We want to, we want to, you know, like have a group photo of of the two hundred thousand children that were conceived the in the parking boom. lot uh, of El Casino Bar, and that would that would fulfill a lifelong dream. Oh my gosh! Yeah, well, you know, not not implying anybody's particular behavior, but uh, indeed there was. It was just good fun times for most most of us just went because the music was always going to be great fun. The dance floor was enormous. Oftentimes in the summer, it was really sweltering because they had swamp coolers, not air conditioning. And so I, I often like to call it the the, um, the homegrown Tucson weight loss program <laughs> because you could easily drop 10 pounds in sweat just dancing a few dances there well you could and and you know with with queen ida anytime she was there you were going to lose some pounds uh the dirty dozen brass bands so many so many tell me some of your favorites that played there over the years you know dan i had to 
I had to go back and look up my own list because, I mean, they just kind of merged in my brain and my memory. Five years worth of concerts once a month is a lot of shows. Um, obviously, Queen Ida. Uh, and I, I was looking at this the last few nights. Going, oh, yeah, I remember when they played the Paladins. Do you remember the Paladins? Absolutely. They were incredibly great. I love them. Uh, we did the, the, uh, the, what was it called? The Meat Show. The Pork and Beef Show. It was uh, Billy Bacon and the Forbidden Pigs and the Cowbillies. We called it the Pork and Beef Show. <laughs> I worked with some very creative people when I was here on staff at KXCI, and it was great fun. Um, let's see who else was one of my favorites. Oh, we were talking about the Dirty Dozen. Dirty Dozen Brass Band. Great, 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 great show. Let's see. Also, Los Lobos. They, Los Lobos? The, Los Lobos had played there like ten times. I, mm-hmm. I ran into them in San Jose last fall, and they told me that the first time they played El Casino, they played a baptism. Oh, my god! Is that a great story? That's or very cool. Yeah. Uh, let's see. The Bone Daddies. Remember the Bone Daddies? Absolutely. Joaquin Carrasco and the Crowns. Um, James Harmon Band. I've got some of this uh, vinyl, in fact. I'm going to play if we have some time. Beausoleil played there. Uh, the, the Leroy Brothers. Dan Del Santo. Some of these artists kind of came and went in the world of music, and you don't hear much about them anymore. Zachary Richard. We did um, Antone's Women. We had Marsha Ball, Angela Australia, and Luann Barton. That was a great show. That was. Even though Luann Barton fell off the stage. We don't care. There's a story back behind that, but I'll save that off mic for off mic. All right, then. All right. <laughs> I'll be looking forward to it. <laughs> well, you know, and and uh, mm-hmm. before I get out of here uh, at some point, I just want to warn people, grab yourself a pen and a piece of paper. I'm going to give you my email address so that you can contact me and um, – Tell me what you want to want to talk about, and we'll try and set up an appointment, and we'll come and and sit down with the camera and hear your stories about uh, KXCI, about El Casino Ballroom, and and all the the fun we all had back in the day when I was younger and had brown hair. Oh my gosh! Hey, I still got hair. I'm well, I'm happy with there's that. There's things to be grateful for at this there age, are. Dan. There are. It's why, the small things. Why don't you give Why don't you go ahead and give out that information as how to contact? Thank you. you. I will. If you have a pen handy, um, it's it's not a tough one. My name is Dan Buckley, and all it is is my initials in the city. So it's DB Tucson at Gmail dot com. Is there, is there a phone number that there people is can indeed? Reach? My cell is two six zero four one seven six. And if you miss that, I'm the only Daniel Buckley in the phone book, uh, as far as I know. Uh, if there are more, I'm on Waverly Street. So just look me up. You you remember phone books? I'm not <laughs> sure anybody has them. Most of us just toss them directly into recycling where they belong. But I'm going to give you my my email address again. It is dbtucson at gmail.com. And the phone once more is 260-4176. Would love to hear your stories. If you got photos, all the better. If you got yourself, that's lovely enough. Yeah. Dan doesn't judge. Dan just collects information like all good documentarians. It's a, it's a wonderful project. We're, I'm just delighted you're doing this, Dan. Well, it is. And, and uh, you know, I mean, some things are probably going to end up on the cutting room floor, but nothing is going away. All of the raw footage for this is eventually going to go over to the Arizona Historical Society, and people will be able to go through the transcripts of everything, find the video itself. If they can find a purpose for it, I'm all in favor of it. One more quick question before we go back to the music. And Dan's going to be around for a while if you'd like to call down to the studio uh, to at least make contact with him. That's fine with me. The The KXCI studio line is 622-KXCI, 622-5924. Um, are you planning to release this in any way to the public, this documentary? As a matter of fact, we are going to premiere it at the Fox oh, Theater exciting. on June 10th of this year. So coming right up. And um, I am told that KXCI, immediately after we premiere the film, is going to have a show. Uh, we're still working on the details for that. Uh, I'm sure we'll hear more as as that comes on. Um, you know, we hope we'll get it together. If for some reason we can't do it, then we'll find another occasion. But we want to have K- KXCI back at El Casino Ballroom. Everybody at El Casino, when I bring up the, the, the magic letters KXCI, their faces light up and they start telling me stories. <laughs> and, you know, I'm sure all of you have yours as well. 
Oh my gosh. Ruby, yeah. thank you so much for for letting me come on and talk about Happy to this. do this. It's a part of our our collective history and and a wonderful piece of the cultural life of Tucson and it deserves to be documented and shared with other people. And please folks, Dan's great at doing interviews. He's so easy to talk to um and I I strongly advise that you do contact him. Whatever kind of story you have, he wants to hear it. Absolutely. Yep. And the dirtier, the better sometimes. Well, uh, you know. oftentimes. Uh, <laughs> you know, a little, little filth never hurt anybody. <laughs> well, we're going to play some more tunes from artists who performed at El Casino Ballroom. And this is one of my favorites, and there's a lot of favorites, but this is one of my faves. Dave Alvin, right here on Real People, Real Radio, KXCI. <laughs> 